This is Drew Spence from the Dynamic Universe and Digital Art Live. We're looking at a new offering from Ron Deviney in the Dash Store. It's called Sparks and Embers, and it's a package of graphic overlays, PNG images, and ABR brushes in Photoshop CC. Uh, it's compatible with other software that supports the new larger brush size. If you're using older software, you can look at my brush conversion video that uses ABR Mate to convert all the brushes downward to older versions of Photoshop and other graphic imaging software. Since this is the pre-production version, we're going to have to look at one of the other products in the DAS store on the download and installation method. So if we look at one of his other brushes, we get Ron Circle Flares. What we'll see is a way to download the file directly. Once I click the download direct, it brings me to my library of purchased items and I can see ways to download and install it. The reason we're manually grabbing these is that these aren't meant to be used inside the DAS Studio environment. These are meant for post work, meaning I've completed my render and my image and then I'm gonna add extra work on top of it in post. That's the phrasing that we use. So once I were to click this, I would download a file, it will come in a zip format. That would be this. Once I've unzipped the file, we get to see what's included in the package. And again, this is the pre-production version. But we first see the top folder is the PNG versions. These are the images with a transparent background. Very quick and easy for drag and drop. Second are the embers overlays. Overlays are images that are basically completed and by bringing them into Photoshop or anything, changing the blend mode, we get to get uh, the actual image itself with no background, but we're gonna take it out manually and it allows us to have a bit more, uh, a bit more of the detail included in the image. We'll have all this nice smoke, We'll have all the embers already glowing already, so we don't have to add that effect ourselves, the little bloom effect. That's gonna be very quick and fast to work with. You probably have somewhere on your computer, your app data roaming, Adobe, and then here comes the CC product, and in there are the presets folder. I recommend once you track this down, that you make this a bookmark, right click, send to desktop and create some kind of bookmark or just right click, create a bookmark, cut and paste it on your desktop somewhere. Not the file itself, the shortcut I'm talking about. So if I go into the presets, I'll see here, there's a set of brushes and a set of styles. What I would want to do is drag and drop those brushes and styles into the folder so I can get access to them. The ABR is the brush file that would get dragged and dropped into brushes and the style could get dragged and drop or copy and paste whatever serves you. This is a finished uh, picture from Photoshop and we want to add some brush work on top. Just the brushes. Maybe we just want to enhance something with the flames and the fire. Just add a little bit more. So we're going to make a new layer. We're going to call this brushes and we're going to add some brushes to it. If I look at my window, we have our layers. We also have our brush folder and our brush folder. In the brush folder itself, I want to see these images a little bit bigger so I can see what I'm working on. What we're gonna do is turn off all the extraneous information. If I leave the brush name and brush strokes on there, I really get a uh, really detailed vision of what this brush is going to do, but I really don't need all that information. I just need the images. So we're gonna turn off the brush name, turn off the brush stroke, and all I'm going to see is the thumbnail. And I'm going to resize it using this slider so I can see really what brushes I'm gonna be using. Normally, I would add a different brush uh, for different layers, but for today, we're just doing a demo. So we're just gonna grab some of his brushes. See what we get. We can go with a random set. I'm gonna resize it a bit. Find a nice, decent size. We're gonna pick a color. Sometimes I pick a color from the picture itself. So I know we at least are matching. And we're gonna throw some brushes on here. Now we got some sparkly brushes. We're enhancing and increasing the effect that was already there. Maybe we'll take this brush, which is a fire brush. We're gonna add that on a new layer. We're gonna call this eyes glow. This is probably a view for most of you. Most of you are probably very familiar with this already. I'm gonna sample that reddish orange color. I get a reddish color. 
on this layer, we're just going to throw some quick glowing uh, effects on the brush itself. We're going to turn it down. So now I have just a little hint of bloom on the cyborg eye. So you get the idea of what brushes can do. Awfully powerful. Use a lot for finishing. Uh, we can take it to extreme levels. We can play around with it subtly. Just different, lots of different ways we could play with this. Let's make another layer. Let's call this, um, I don't know. We'll call this fire effects. And we'll start to play with this one. Let's see what this one gives us. We're going to pick another color. We don't want to go with something super bright. Let's go back to something a little, little yellowish. It'll probably get us in the ballpark. And we get a nice, look at that, a nice spray of dust, dirt, debris, flames, embers. Oh, we have a lot going on with just that alone. Nice little burst of smoke. Yeah, increase it. We get some nice detailed smoke happening. See what we're adding? Just some nice smoke. We'll add some nice smoke. Give it some more character. Just a little bit more character. And, uh... I think you pretty much understand how this goes. Well, we could revisit brushes anytime. So this is very nice. It's a huge compliment of them. We should talk about styles for a second. Uh, brushes do have styles. Let's look at our styles menu. We pull up styles and these are the included stylus uh, uh, effects. So let's go back to something like the original set of brushes that I added. If you can see those, those are the original set of sparkles I put in the air. You see that? So that layer is okay, but it's not really doing anything interesting. They're just little white sparkles and globules. So we're gonna try to get them to do some highlighting. Um, of course, whenever you get a set of styles brushes or style effects, you can add them to anything that you're using. So I tend to just use these across the board for all the different products that I've got, but we're just gonna pick a random interesting one and this will change the color. This will give my embers a bit of a glow. So what these are are layer settings embedded in a style that you can apply to different items. You can copy the style, you can copy the layer style and apply it to something else. So let's say I want my eye glow to do something slightly different. I'm gonna paste that, eye, uh, uh, that layer style and it will convert all the settings. So now we have something a lot more outrageous only based on using just the styles that the image has jumped to another level and the brushes have increased their usefulness. And don't forget, styles are useful across the board. I don't have to only use it with this set of brushes. So a library of styles has a lot more value than you might imagine. But this is just a quick way to get some brushes going. We're gonna add some interest to the artwork. That would be one example of just using brushes right off the gate. Let's take an image like this. We have our fire breathing dragon. Um, the flame is a 3D model of flame, which is excellent, but it's not quite as super impactful as I want. So we have a nice, a nice dragon, but we need to increase this somehow with some specialness. You already know what we could do with brushes. Let's just move quick through some brushes. Let's say uh, flame source. We'll make a flame source. We'll take that neutral brush we grabbed in the beginning. I'll keep the color the same. I'm not really worried that much about it, but I'm just gonna give myself a little bit of a, a little bit of a source of flame that is coming from the beginning of the dragon's fire. But the fire breath isn't really as exciting as it could be. Um, that's a shortcoming for what I did in my 3D render, knowing that I would need a little bit of help. So let's take a look at what he's offered us in the PNG files. We're going to go take a look at the PNG files and we're going to try to grab some flames. So you want to grab something that looks pretty crazy right off the gate. I can change the size to extra large so I can really see what the flames are. But for a lot of times we can just sort of be a little random, see what we get and then play with it and make adjustments. One of these is probably a perfect match but we're not going to spend our time really because you can get caught up and we'll just grab one of the first ones that we see. I'm gonna drag and drop it into the picture. I'm gonna place it and now I've got my spark. And we're gonna play with the flame and try to get it to do a little bit more than what I had here already. I'm kind of feeling that, that looks a little juicy. 
Oh boy. That is helping out my fire quite a bit. If you didn't see, let's take a look at it again. That's without, that is with the brush. And of course we can clean it. I can rasterize the layer. And again, I don't even use this version of uh, Photoshop. I'm usually using one of my older ones, but we can just clean it up a little bit. Maybe even more. Uh, no need to even worry about that because I'm going to probably put my flame source on top. So the fire just doesn't come from that little point. And obviously, as you know, if you keep going, we can add more and more brushes, more and more embers. Let's grab one more because they definitely work well in layers. We're going to resize this one. And we're going to let it sit on top as another source of the flame on top of my glowing light. And now we've definitely added some energy to the shot. We've increased the specialness of it. We turn those two off. We are back to just our general setting. And you know now that we can also add all the brushes on top, add all sorts of uh, extra elements to it. We have overlays, which is basically the finished images. I can pull this open. And let's say I pick one that I like, number four. I have some sparks. I have some smoke, some energy happening here. Very, very good already. I'm going to drag and drop that on top of my image. Right about there. We'll play with it. And now I have the image here on top. What I do is I change the blend mode of this layer to screen. Uh, you can see all the different modes here. You can also always experiment and play with the different modes. But we want screen mode. And screen mode removes the background and I just get the effect of the image on top. So you can see how in a plain sense, the picture was very nice, but now we've added all sorts of dynamic energy to it with the overlay. Do you see that? That's what the overlay is going to be about. So I could either drag and drop different items onto the scene, which were the PNGs. I can manually go in with the brushes and the styles and add all the elements myself, or we can also add the full content of post work on top with an overlay by changing the blend mode. Normal image and the blend mode combined with style. So this package has a lot on offer that it's bringing the artist that uses post work. And so in conclusion, we had the PNG files, which were the images with a transparent background, easily drag and drop on top of your artwork. We had the overlays, which was really the finished image with tons of effects to add detail. This can just lay on top of your work and we screen out the background and you get some really, really nice effects to your work. We have the actual brushes themselves, which is the ABR file and the styles file, which is the ASL. Those are meant to be installed in Photoshop and made available. And it gave you a catalog of PNGs that lets you see all the details of what's on offer, image by image. So overall, it's a very comprehensive package from Ron Deviney. It's called Sparks and Embers. It's available in the Daz store. Direct download, add to your library. Uh, happy rendering. I'm Drew Spence from the Dynamic Universe and Digital Art Live. This was Ron Sparks and Embers. Thank you.